All right, so when did you get this place? About 12 years ago. And explain why you had held off for nine years. I, you know, my, my accountant was telling me it's not a thing to do, but I'm, I'm like, he's a, he's a white Jewish guy. So it's not like the haircut experiences are the same. He's getting a haircut maybe once a month, once every couple months. Black guys got to get a haircut every week. You know, so my thing, he didn't understand the amount of revenue that happens in here. And he didn't understand my vision for a barbershop. It's a place where you see guys feel at home. You know, one of the most famous sayings is ATL, ho, ATL, ho. So I was saying it's swag, ho. We, uh, we want you to get shaved, wash your room, and to walk out with some swagger. Yeah, when we first came down here, it was a lot busier um, in terms of the stuff we had on the wall. But when I came back, I was just like, I'm gonna do it more like an apple store, very simple. For the barber, we got these chairs. I would choose chairs over a grand a piece. But I wanted people to really feel comfortable. I didn't want them sitting in beauty shop chairs. I wanted them to feel like chairs are very masculine. You know? Those chairs aren't cheap either. No, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. I definitely could have bought more gold jewelry. I've been happy to be an owner. I've been happy to be a part of this community that I still live in. I've been happy to be, you know, an example. I've been happy to see these men, you know, not only change and grow their lives, but grow the lives of young men and women in this community. It's just a, it's an honor for me to be an owner. What makes this place unique? I feel like the camaraderie, I feel like, you know, just the love that you get in here, it's like a home, it's like a family. So I feel like we all family in here, so. You know, our guys travel. Kent probably travels more than any rapper I've ever known. He's a staple in the community. People knew him before I was the owner. Part of the reason I never gave up on this location was because of him. He's the one who, you know, had to say to me at times, hey, you know, if people can't afford it, we still got to make sure that these kids go back with a haircut which was part of he and my wife's, you know, um, saying of just making sure that we do free haircuts and stuff with partnering with radio back. So to me, he's a, he's a barber, but he really is a community leader. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? I've enjoyed the ride, and um, that's what I like to do the best, and I do it to the day I leave here. My goal is to see these people matriculate into ownership. What better person to own a shop than a person who's came to the ground floor up? So the same way Chick-fil-A, and I saw the Truett family and power of those around them, that's my goal. So as we do open up the license and trans franchise, I'm gonna pivot inward before I pivot outward. How exciting was it for you to be in State Farm Arena? It means the world. Just as a nerd fan of, of the Hawks, it's amazing. And what I really like about our Hawks area is you can buy the cheapest tickets in, in State Farm Arena you want. You can come to our barbershop and watch the game from the same level as VP, VIPs watch it for free. His ideas. I do it out in this world. Like, I'm a pretty big thinker, and I just feel like no matter how big I think the thought is, he always can take it three or four, five, five times bigger. This is a working class black and white community, um, and this community deserves the best we can possibly offer. And if you look at our seats, you look at our shelving, it is the best we can possibly offer. So you want me to cut your hair? Nah, nah, I ain't gonna let you. I ain't gonna let no white guy cut my hair. Why? That'd be breaking solidarity with my people, right? <laughs> <laughs>